2021 is the 700th anniversary of the death of Dante and we're going to hear quite a lot about some of the Divine Comedy, certainly a lot about language and how he coined, I've read, up to 30% of the words used by modern Italians, certainly a lot about love and courtly love and how he wrote the greatest poem to his youthful infatuation Beatrice, probably a lot about politics about Guelphs and Gebelines and about emperors and popes and how Dante could condemn all with equal ferocity and probably about the birth of modernity as well and Dante's role in the Renaissance. He was the friend of Giotto following on from the revolution of Francis and giving birth to modern sensibilities about what it is to be human. They're all for the good but what we might not hear so much about is the thing that Dante himself says his poem should be forcing us to think through above everything else. He believed he was charged from heaven to write about this, and that was our spiritual transformation, how life is a comedy, and that through its tragedies we can be led no less than back to God. So here is a top 10 spiritual insights from Dante's genius and coming in at number 10 is that comedy transcends but doesn't exclude tragedy. The Divine Comedy gets its name because it has a good end in the sense that everything is brought together, everything is seen to be complete, everything has meaning but that does not stop suffering. Dante learns that on the other side of suffering actually through the wrestle to accept it he discovers that there's a bigger life which can embrace everything that happens to him and it's when he can embrace what happens to him that he discovers that greater life and so tragedy actually is the pathway to the comedy of which his poem is named coming in at number nine is the insight that morality will get you nowhere but understanding your soul can get you everywhere now this can be something of a shock because if there's one thing that you know about the Divine Comedy it's that in the Inferno the punishment fits the crime, the so-called contrapasso or the opposite suffering. You get what you deserve in hell because of what you've done in life. It feels very moralistic but actually all the way through the Divine Comedy Dante is undoing moral assumptions. He's asking us to look more deeply and that's what his poem offers it's not just a roll call of the top 10 commandments spread out across beautiful language. It's a challenge to look inside because it's by looking inside that we discover more and more. In at number eight is the realization that ascent and descent are intimately linked. It's often by a seeming failure or disruption or even catastrophe that we learn something about life and discover in fact that we've turned things around. This is no more amazingly shown in the Divine Comedy when Dante reaches the very floor of hell, discovers Lucifer frozen into it, and it's by climbing right onto Lucifer's body that he and Virgil begin to find a way out. It's only by seeing things in their darkest that we can appreciate how that can become light. Descent and ascent are intimately linked. Insight number seven is that life is not a hero's journey, but is actually a lover's journey. Dante spends quite a lot of time, in fact, reforming the old ancient assumptions that it was about bravery, that you impress the gods and so received immortality from them, and instead that it's about the capacity to love, to follow passion, to develop the discernment, to track the line of beauty into life, that actually you find your way into divine life. Life is not about heroics, it's about love and how we can transform our erotic desire so that we don't just want to possess life but ultimately ride into life and accept all that life has to offer because we say yes to it, because we love it. Insight number six is that light is intelligent. A lot of the divine comedy and a lot of the poetry is about nature. It's about how plants, how skies, how stars, how planets, the world around speaks to Dante and no more powerfully speaks than light itself. If you can look up in Dante's minds then you can never go too far off course 
and he plays a lot with the language of light to show us how light is in fact intelligent. You know, much as we say the sun lights up the sky, so we might say an idea lights up our mind. And I think this is particularly valuable, why it's so worthwhile going outside and experiencing the sun's light and how that feels so much more vital than just electric light. It feeds us not just physically, but psychologically and spiritually. So remember, living light is intelligent light. Always look up. We're now down to insight number five, and this is that intelligence is a kind of resonance. It's not about logic. It's not about proof. It's not even about objectivity. Rather, it's about the subjective, direct awareness of things that resonates with the world around, that finds the harmony, and so knows that the little life that we experience and know directly is part of a much wider life that ultimately extends to infinity. And the intelligent person is the person who knows how to navigate a way through that. It's the old sense of wisdom, which wasn't just about being smart. It wasn't, it about, it wasn't even about knowing facts. It was about knowing how to respond to life moment by moment. And so our intelligence expands as our felt awareness of life around us expands. And that too is very much part of Dante's descent and ascent. Insight number four is that unity is actually diverse. It's not singular. One of the dawning awarenesses on Dante's mind is that the divine unity it's not actually about fundamentalism, it's not about literalism, it's not about fideism, just blindly saying yes to God. It's about seeing how all the manifest, diverse lights of creation, all sorts of souls can reflect the one light, like as many fragments of a mirror, and that they dance more and more harmoniously as he rises through the heavens, because they become more and more themselves, they don't become identikit souls, they don't become monochrome Christians, quite the opposite. All sorts of people he finds in heaven, pagans, Jews, people from diverse lands, people who we barely know anything about, let alone what religion they had. But they're all singing with their own voice, fully developed to the divine tune. And so it's individuality deeply, deeply developed that leads to the divine unity in a chorus of light in heaven. So we've got to the top three and coming at number three is a fact about the divine comedy which can shock believers and unbelievers alike, which is that there is a Christianity beyond Christianity. I think Dante saw his task as renewing a tired, lethargic, degenerate, corrupt, set of beliefs in order to reconnect with the origin and the wellspring with their source and discover the true spirit of the religion which in his time was called Christianity but which can bring in pre-Christian insights particularly from the ancient Greeks, extra Christian insights particularly from the Jewish and the Islamic tradition and what he finds quite to his amazement and even resistance in fact is that in heaven are all sorts of people he did not expect to see there. He didn't think that people could find their way to God unless they were baptised. He was quite inclined to follow Church 101, and yet this was powerfully overturned because he sees inside divine ways, doesn't just accept them as a dead creed. Insight number two is about freedom and how it's not about choice, but it's about being able to say yes to life, fully, consciously, desirously, full of awareness, our will aligned with the affirmation of life, regardless what happens. And the reason why that brings freedom is it because it opens us to life itself. It cultivates an undefended character. It cultivates the virtues which can go to the lowest point because they want everything to flow into them and rise to the highest point because they're able to contain everything. That is the nature of our freedom because it makes us akin to God who embraces the whole of life regardless as well. So we've come to number one, but here's a quick countdown. In at number 10 was that comedy transcends but doesn't exclude tragedy. 
in at number nine was that morality gets you nowhere, but seeing inside your soul can lead you everywhere. Number eight was that descent and ascent are part and parcel of the same path. Number seven was that life's journey is not for the hero, but for the lover, for the passionate follower of the line of beauty. Number six is that light is intelligent, along actually with everything else in the natural world. It speaks of truth if we can understand its language. Number five is that intelligence itself is a kind of resonance or harmony. It's not about proof, it's not about reason, it's about the felt response which we can develop to life and that can lead us therefore into more and more life. Number four was that unity is diverse, not singular. It's when we become more and more fully ourselves, undefended, that we can resonate more and more fully with those around us and so join into a great harmony. Number three is that Dante is arguing there is a Christianity beyond Christianity discovered when the wellspring of the religion is discovered and that then exceeds all formularies and all that the church teaches. Number two is about freedom and it's the freedom is not about choice. Freedom is about the ability to say yes to life with all that you are, all you desire, all your will, because that is what God does, embracing the whole of life freely as well. Which brings us to number one, the number one genius insight for Dante in this his 700th year. And it's the most important spiritual question that Dante asks himself, that you can ask yourself, that we can all ask ourselves. It's the question he begins to ask himself when he wakes up midway through the journey of his life, which is our life, lost, strayed from the path, in the dark wood. And that question is, who am I? He begins the great process of turning to himself, asking what he thinks his life is about. Is it about politics? Is it about poetry? And discovering that actually it's about realising that his life and God's life is one life and that he can say I am because the divine I am echoes through all things, which is what he discovers as he descends into the inferno climbs Mount Pur Pur Purgatory and then rises gloriously with Beatrice through the light of the high heavens.